Hey guys, welcome. Now we are going to continue with the topic of NCRT textbook that is the cell, the unit of the life. So we have covered the first part of this in the previous video and now we are going to continue about the eukaryotic cell organelles, the cell organelles of the eukaryotic cell and now we came to mitochondria. So let's see about the mitochondria. Mitos means thread. Chondria means body. So thread-like bodies. While viewing through the microscope, they observed a thread-like bodies. So then they named it as mitochondria. So mitochondria and the singular we call it as mitochondrion. Unless specifically stained or not easily visible under the microscope, the number of mitochondria per cell is variable depending on the physiological activity of the cells. For example, if the muscle, we, in the muscles also we have the red muscles and white muscles. Red muscles is for aerobic and white muscles is for anaerobic. So for red muscles we need more amount of oxygen to work out for a long period of time. For that muscles we have more amount of mitochondria. Wherever we have a high ATP demand and high oxygen is needed, there and all we will have more amount of mitochondria because mitochondria is the powerhouses of the cell. In terms of shape and size, also considerable degree of variability is observed. Typically, it is a sausage shaped. So I think if you have viewed the hot dog, so it will be like a hot dog shape or cylindrical having a diameter of 0 0.2 to 1.0 micrometers. Average will be 0 0.5 micrometers and the length is 1.0 to 4.1 micrometers. Each mitochondria is a double membrane bounded structure. Okay, here is the picture of the mitochondria. So, which is very colorful picture. This is the outer membrane. So, like nucleus, the three organelles are double membrane that is nucleus, mitochondria and chloroplast. These three cell organelles are double membrane bounded cell organelles. And one more important thing is mitochondria and chloroplast are semi-autonomous cell organelles because it has its own mitochondria so, sorry it has its own DNA and own ribos ribosomes because of this nature only they call it as these both cell organelles alone we call it as semi-autonomous cell organelles with outer membrane and we have the inner membrane and this we call green color part we call it as matrix and the space between the outer membrane and inner membrane is intermembrane space and this foldings we call it as crista. With outer membrane and inner membrane dividing its lumen distinctly into two aqueous compartments that is the outer compartment and inner compartment. So the inner compartment is filled with dense homogeneous substances which we call matrix. So this green color part is matrix. The outer membrane forms and constitutes the limiting boundary of the organelle. So the inner membrane will form a number of infoldings which we call cristae. So this infoldings are cristae. So inside this infoldings we have matrix. So in singular it is crista. In plural it is cristae towards the matrix. The cristae increases the surface area. Wherever we have the foldings there will be automatically to increase the surface area. For example in the brain also we have the gyri and sulci to increase the surface area for the neurons. In the stomach also we have the villi, microvilli to increase the surface area for absorption. Likewise, here also we have the cristae to increase the surface area. The two membranes have their own specific enzymes associated with the mitochondrial function. So the mitochondria are the sites of aerobic respiration. They produce cell energy in a form of ATP. Hence they are called powerhouses of the cell. So adenosine triphosphate. ATP and one more very important thing is ATP is RNA. ATP is not DNA, ATP is RNA. Okay, the matrix is also possess a single circular DNA. So the DNA here is single and circular DNA. A few RNA molecules are also there, ribosomes. And the ribosomes present in the mitochondria is 70S ribosomes. So one more very important question. The ribosomes present in this mitochondria is 70S and the ribosomes present in the chloroplast is also 70S and the ribosomes present in the prokaryotic cell is also 70S. So, 
and components required for synthesis of proteins the mitochondria divides by fission next plastids so uh, one more very important thing about mitochondria is mitochondria will not depend its division on cell division it divides by its own okay so because of that we call it as semi autonomous cell organelle because it has its own dna and one more very important thing the all the human all the animals or human beings we got the mitochondria from the mother not from the father okay that is one more important thing all the mitochondria in us is from the mother father cannot give the mitochondria that is also very very important question next plastids plastids are found in all plant cells and in euglenoids they are easily observed under microscope as a very large so the large other than nucleus first the largest cell organelle is nucleus other than nucleus the largest uh, next to the nucleus it will be plastids they bear some specific pigments thus imparting the specific colors to the plants based on the type of pigments plastids are classified into chloroplast means chloro means green color presence of chlorophyll chloroplast chromoplast means color any color leucoplast means white color so the chloroplast contains the chlorophyll and carotenoid pigments which are responsible for trapping the light energy essential for photosynthesis in the chromoplast fat soluble carotenoid pigments like carotene xanthophylls and others are present this give the part of the plant a yellow orange and red color the leucoplast are the colorless pigments of varied shapes and size with stored nutrients so that is for chromoplast next amyloplast so the leucoplast are colorless plastids because it stores the nutrients so again the leucoplast is divides into amyloplast if it store the carbohydrates the leucoplast we call amyloplast if it stores oils and fat then the leucoplast uh, we call it as eleoplast so example for amyloplast is potato and eleoplast is if it stores protein we call it as eleoplast so this is the chloroplast we have the outer membrane inner membrane and we have the granum so this whole stack like coins together we call it as granum and one coin we call it as thylakoid and the connections between one granum to the other granum we call it as stroma lamella and this whole remaining space we call it as stroma like matrix in the mitochondria here we have the stroma majority of the chloroplast of a green plants are found in the mesophyll cells of the leaves they are the lens shaped oval spherical discoid or even ribbon shaped organelles having a varying length variable length around 5 to 10 micrometers and a width of 2 to 4 micrometers their numbers varies per 1 per cell of chlamydomonas a green algae to 20 to 40 per cell in mesophylls like mitochondria chloroplast is also a double membrane bounded cell organelle of the two the inner chloroplast membrane is relatively less permeable the space limit by the inner membrane of the chloroplast we call it as stroma the number of organized flattened membranous sacs we call it as thylakoids are present in the stroma means that coin each coin we call it as thylakoid thylakoids are arranged in a stack like a pile of coins which we call grana in singular granum or intergranal thylakoids in addition there are a flat membranous tubules which we call stroma lamella connecting the thylakoids of the different grana the membrane of the thylakoids enclose a space which we call lumen the stroma of the chloroplast will contains the enzymes required for the synthesis of carbohydrates and proteins it also contains a small double stranded circular dna so the dna present in the mitochondria and in the chloroplast is circular small circular dna so the chlorophyll pigments dna and as well as the ribosomes chlorophyll pigments are present in the thylakoids the ribosomes of the chloroplast are smaller in 70s ribosomes than the cytoplasmic ribosomes which are 80s so the cytoplasmic ribosomes are 80s coming to the next ribosomes 
The ribosomes are granular structures first observed under the electron microscope as a dense particles by George Pellad in the year 1953. They are composed of ribonucleic acid means RNA. So because of that ribosomes, RNA bodies and proteins are not surrounded by and these and proteins and are not surrounded by any membrane. So no membrane bounded cell organelle is ribosome. The eukaryotic ribosomes are 80s while the prokaryotic ribosomes are 70s. Each ribosome has two subunits, larger and smaller subunit. The two subunits of 80s ribosomes are 60s and 40s, while that of 70s ribosomes are 50s and 30s. So S means Swedberg, Swedberg unit. So one question they have given to confuse us, ribosomes was identified first observed by so in the in the options they have given swedberg so with without any doubt most of the people will keep this swedberg because of s it is not swedberg it is pellad okay so ribosomes have a, another name pellad granules because pellad has invented like golgi apparatus like ribosomes we have another name called pellad granules okay this is very important so, stands for sedimentation coefficient, Swedberg means. It is indirectly a measure of density and size. Both 70s and 80s ribosomes are composed of two subunits. Next, cytoskeleton, an elaborate network of filamentous proteinaceous structures present in the cytoplasm is collectively referred to as cytoskeleton. The cytoplasm in a cell are involved in many functions such as mechanical, support, motility, maintenance of the shape of the cell. So, this is the section of cilia or flagella. Here we have the cilia or flagella. This is under electron microscope, this first picture. And this is the diagrammatic representation. Okay. So, let's study once about the cilia and flagella and let's go. Cilia, singular we call it as cilium. Flagella, singular we call it as flagellum, are hail-like outgrowths of cell membrane. Cilia are small structures which works like a ores or small structures causing the movement of either the cell or the surrounding fluid but not very fast movement because the flagella will make the movement very fast. Flagella is comparatively longer because it has the filament hook and basal body. These are the three parts of flagella. This is very, very important. Responsible for cell movement. The prokaryotic bacteria also possess the flagella, but they are structurally different from that of eukaryotic flagella. The electron microscopic study of the cilium or the flagellum shows that they are covered with plasma membrane. So their core we call it as axonine. So here it is covered with outer membrane we call it as plasma membrane. It is covered by plasma membrane. So the core we call it as axoneme which possesses a number of microtubules running parallel to the long axis. The axoneme usually have 9 pairs of doublets. So of radially arranged peripheral tubules we have totally 9 pairs of doublets. So, located centrally, peripheral tubules, a pair of centrally located microtubules, such an arrangement of axonemal microtubules, means core microtubules, is referred to as 9 plus 2 array. So, 9 plus 2 means 9 duplets and 2 singlets. So, this is very important. So, mostly we will confuse in the center also we have the duplets. No, we have the center singlet. So, 9 duplets and center 2 singlets. So, the arrangement is 9 plus 2 arrangement. And here we have the plasma membrane. This is the peripheral microtubule duplets. We have the inter duplet bridge. This is the center microtubule, which is a singlet, two singlets. So, the central tubules are connected by bridges and it is enclosed by a central sheet. It is connected to one of the tubules of each peripheral doublets by a radial spokes. Thus there are 9 radial spokes because for 9 duplets we have the 9 radial spokes. Only one spoke from one duplet. 
thus there are nine radial spokes the peripheral duplet are also interconnected by a linker both the cilium and flagellum emerges from the centriole like structure which we call basal body but the parts of the uh, parts of the flagellum is basal body hook and filament centrosome and centriole let's see about this what is centrosome is an organelle centrosome some means body organelle usually contain two cylindrical structures which we call centrioles they are surrounded by amorphous pericentriolar material both centrioles and in a centrosome lies perpendicular to each other lies perpendicular to each other like a compass it will be there perpendicular so each other in which the each of is organization like is like a cartwheel so which is very it will be like a similar to this flagellar organization only made up of nine evenly spaced peripheral of the tubulin protein each of the peripheral tubulin is a triplet the adjacent triplet is also linked and the central part of the proximal region of the centriole is also proteinaceous and we called hub so this is connected with a tubule of peripheral triplet by radial spokes made up of protein so the centri centriole from the basal body of cilia and flagella the spindle fibers that gives rise to spindle apparatus during cell division in animal cell this is the work of centrioles it will form a spindle fiber during the cell division in animal cell so mostly the centrosome and centrioles are present in the animal cell and lower plants and one more important thing the arrangement for this centriole or so centrosome is 9 plus 0 arrangement because nine triplets it will be nine triplets next nucleus nucleus as a cell organelle was first identified and described by robert brown as earlier in 1831 later the material of the nucleus stained by basic dyes and gave, given the name chromatin by fleming okay chromatin so the interface nucleus the nucleus of the cell which is not dividing we call it as interface this we will study in detail in the cell division has highly extended and elaborated nuclear protein fibers which we call chromatin the nuclear matrix and one or more spherical bodies which we call nucleoli so where the rna is sorry ribosomes are formed means ribosomes are produced from nucleoli so here we have the picture this is the nucleus so now nucleus is bounded by nuclear envelope which is double membraned we have the nuclear pore we call it as nuclear apparatus also nucleolus and nucleoplasm so electron microscope has revealed that nuclear envelope which consists of two parallel membranes with a space between 10 to 50 nanometers which we call perinuclear space forms a barrier between the materials present inside the nucleus and that of cytoplasm the outer membrane usually remains continuous with endoplasmic reticulum so because of that endoplasmic reticulum we also call it as highways of the cell and also bears the ribosomes on it so that ribosomes also be at the num at a number of places the nuclear envelope is interrupted by a minute pores which are formed by the fusion of two membranes this nuclear pores are the passages through which the movement of rna and mo protein molecules takes place in both directions between the nucleus and cytoplasm normally there is only one nucleus per cell variations in the number of nuclei are frequently observed can you recollect the names of organisms that have more than one nucleus per cell some mature cells even lack of the nucleus for example erythrocytes of many mammals and sieve tube cells of vascular plants would be considered as these cells are living would you consider these cells are living the nuclear matrix of the nucleoplasm yes those cells are living the nuclear matrix of the nucleoplasm contain the nucleolus and chromatin the nucleoli are structures present in the nucleoplasm the content of the nucleolus is continuous with the rest of nucleoplasm and it is not a membrane bounded structure so ribosomes and centri centrosome and uh, nucleolus are no membrane bounded structures these three are 
it is site for active ribosomal rna synthesis larger and more numerous nucleoli are present in actively activating carrying out for protein synthesis because ribosomes are synthesized ribosomal rna is synthesized in nucleoli that is the reason you may recall that the interface nucleus has loose and indistinct network of nucleoprotein fiber which we call chromatin but during different stages of cell division shells show structured chromosomes in place of the nucleus chromatin contains dna and some basic protein which we call histone proteins some non histone proteins are also and also rna is present so inside the dna so we have the chromatin material inside the chromatin material we have the dna histone non histone and also rna a single human cell has approximately 2 meters long threaded of dna distributed among its 46 pairs of chromosomes so humans will have the 46 chromosomes which is of 22 pairs 46 chromosomes which is 23 pairs you will study in detail of the dna in packing in the form of chromosomes in in the 12th class every chromosome visible only during dividing cells essential has a primary constriction or the centromere so here we have a constriction in this picture so the center constriction we call it as centromere on the sides of which a disc shaped structures which we call it as kinetochore that is for the attachment of spindle fibers during cell division the centromere will holds two chromatin or the of a chromosome so this is one chromatid and this is another chromatid so in this picture this chromosome this whole thing we call it as chromosome so we have two chromatids for this chromosome and the center we call it as here centromere and the proteins extension on the centromere is kinetochore the centromere will holds the two chromatids of the chromosome based on the position of the centromere the chromatids chromosomes are classified into four types metacentric chromosome has a middle centromere so here this is metacentric we have the center middle exactly in the center we have the centromere and in the middle and forming a two equal arms arm arms of the chromosome two equal arms will be there the sub metacentric chromosome has centromere slightly away from the middle so one end will be long and other end will be short so this we call it as sub metacentric resulting in one short arm and one long arm in case of acrocentric the chromosome is situated close to the end acro means very far forming one extremely short and one extremely long whereas telocentric telo means very far acro means far telo means very very far telocentric chromosomes has a terminal centromere so very short arm will be there and the arm the remaining arm is very long so we have the metacentric submetacentric acrocentric and telocentric and for here we have the some more constrictions which we call it as satellite so this part is satellite and here we have the secondary constriction so this is about the chromosomes in this chromosomes only we have the dna histone and non histone proteins as well as rna and sometimes a few chromosomes have non staining secondary constrictions at a certain lo constant location this gives the appearance of some fragment which we call satellite coming to the finally microbodies many membrane bounded minute vesicles we call microbodies that contain various enzymes are present both in plants and animals animal cells okay my dear friends that's it about the topic of the cell the unit of life thank you very much if you have any doubts or questions related to this topic you are free to ask me okay thank you very much but don't forget to subscribe to my channel like share and comment thank you very very much